Hello, my name is Penny Hess, and I want to talk to you today about how we as white people can begin to rectify our relationship to African people and to oppressed and colonized peoples throughout the world. I think this is really the most important question that we can be talking about today, because we live in a time of incredible crisis, a crisis of the United States government, the crisis of Europe, the crisis of imperialism, and what we see all around us, war, US-backed assaults on the people on the planet. We see the struggle, we see financial insecurity, we see suffering, we see forced migration, we see theft of, of resources, and poverty, and people who, who can't eat, and we see this U.S. violence against the African community right here on the streets of the United States. And most importantly, we see resistance. We see people fighting back, taking back their own resources, their own land, their dignity, their, their own government, and the ability to create a future in their own interest. And I'm the chair of the African People's Solidarity Committee. We're an organization of white people that was organized under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party that leads the Uhuru movement. The African People's Socialist Party is working for the unity of Africa and African people all around the world, the liberation of Africa, which is something that must happen. Africa is the richest continent on the planet, and yet African people live in the greatest poverty on a dollar, dollar fifty a day, just working all day for a meal. It is not life. It is, it is just subsistence under incredible repression and terror. And we are part of the African People's Socialist Party's strategy. Our strategy is to go into the white community and to talk to and win other white people, just like you and me, to take a stand and recognize that the future, a future for this whole planet, only exists if African people, indigenous people, and oppressed peoples on this whole world have the ability to control their lives, to control their own futures. This is what is happening in the world today. We see two Americas. And we see this gap between white America and African is growing every day. We see police murders of young African people almost daily in this country. And I think that there is a lot of questioning among a certain sector of white people about how it is that we can overcome this situation that we see. And how can we rectify our relationship to African people and how can... How can we move forward in, in a positive way and, and bring the kind of unity that many of us do want to see? We know that the white population is very, very polarized right now. So we see so many white people following Trump or even following Hillary Clinton, whose positions aren't even that different than Trump's. But we see a certain sector of us who want to to change the world, who want to see a world in which all human beings can live, no one at the expense of anybody else. So in the African People's Solidarity Committee, we have come to understand through the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, the basis for this contradiction in the world that, that we experience today, for what is fear for white people and um, what even could be um, excitement and jubilation for other people as they see themselves taking power over their lives. And the first thing that we have to recognize is that the United States, Europe, and capitalism itself sit on a pedestal of the enslavement of African people, on the genocide against the indigenous people, and on the colonial terror and domination and genocide against the majority of the people on the planet Earth. This is very profound because, you know, and this isn't, this isn't, by the way, a matter of my opinion or speculation. This is historical record. White people came 
to this country, to this land, stole the land, and did everything from give the indigenous people smallpox infested blankets to all out wage a people's war against the indigenous people and mm -hmm. slaughter them over and over again until by the 1890s, it was considered that uh, the West has been won because indigenous people had been sufficiently murdered and slaughtered. That we're talking about on the continent of Africa where there were incredible civilizations since the earliest times of history that Europe invaded Africa beginning in the 1400s, the 1500s, um, sending ships into Africa, first gaining gold and stealing gold, um, which brought in to Europe a, uh, and built an economy that for the first time that, that helped bring wealth to Europe, which was deeply impoverished all throughout the Middle Ages. And that Europe sent, and, and North America sent ships to Africa, surrounding the coast of Africa, with guns, with arms, going into the, the, the towns and the villages and the cities where African people lived, raiding human beings, raiding families, raiding, raiding kinship groups, and stealing the best, the brightest, the youngest. I mean, you know, and, and capturing African people, loading them onto ships, taking them through the door of no return, loading them onto ships in groups in which they couldn't even talk to each other, separated from family, from kinship, from culture, from everything that they had ever known, did this by the millions and hundreds of millions, sending them on ships where so many African people died, that there is a highway of bones that the sharks have eaten under, under the sea of the Atlantic Ocean in what is called the Middle Passage and bringing African people to basically work forever, work for um, maybe a lifespan at times of seven years in which white people had the power of life and death. And this stolen labor, this hideous labor in which Africans were tortured, talk about terrorism, which terrorism was inflicted, the most hideous kind of beatings and mutilations and cutting off of ears and every possible kind of terror against African people for hundreds of years inside this country and in other places around the world. This is what created the wealth that enabled the United States to become rich and powerful. This and the genocide against the indigenous people and the US and European colonial domination and power and terror against the majority of the people on the planet. So we have to you know, we have to come to terms with that. We have to really look at that truth. Because what is it that transformed the millions of us who came from Europe to this land, deeply impoverished, with nothing, with just sometimes a, a little bag and all of our kids, you know, coming to this land and within a generation of two or two, walking up the ladder of success to home ownership and college education for our kids and living in the suburbs with trees and peace and quiet. What is it that did that, that gave us that? Do we really believe that it's our hard work? Or do we believe that it was our unity with the terror against African and indigenous people, which is the reality in this country, that created wealth, that created pros prosperity for us to be able to live a life with a future, but this is a life on the pedestal of the oppression of African and indigenous people. This is the truth that we have to look at. And this is what is playing out in the world. Because do you realize that Europe, European people, white people, control 80% of the world's resources? You know, that everybody else is scrambling, even though most of the people on the planet live in countries in which the resources abound, but they are stolen. And especially this is true of Africa. Africa is not poor, it is greedy. The African People's Solidarity Committee is an organization under the leadership of Chairman Omari Shikala. 
I urge you to go to YouTube, to go to ahuranews.com and listen to the chairman speak. Listen to the understandings that he is putting out. The understanding of the African People's Socialist Party is called African internationalism. Obviously, I am not African, but I am an African internationalist because it gives me the truth, because it takes me and my comrades out of the center of this question. It takes us beyond silliness, like talking about a struggle against racism, the ideas in our heads versus the right of African and indigenous people as oppressed peoples to wage a struggle for national liberation, just as the Vietnamese did, just as the Chinese did, just as the people of El Salvador and Nicaragua did and oppressed peoples in Africa and around the world have been struggling for for the last decade in this country. So this changes how we see ourselves. It's not whether we change the ideas in our heads per se. It's about what stand we take in the world. And we believe that all of the wealth that we have and enjoy and all of our democracy and all of our opportunity comes because it is stolen from the labor, the resources, and the brilliance of African people and oppressed peoples, and it must be returned to have peace on this planet. But that just makes sense. That just simply makes sense that all the people on the planet must have a right to control their lives, to control their people, and to benefit from the resources of their land, not have it stolen, that we can live at the expense of everybody else. And I mean, the fact is, anybody that lives at the expense of anybody else, the truth, the reality is going to come back to kill you, to haunt you, to, to rectify, to <coughs> right a wrong. This is simply how life is. So why don't we see that this is how the word, world is? And that if we want to be part of curing this planet, because we can see an imperialism that committed genocide and enslavement and terror against so many people, of course it would do this to the environment. It doesn't care because the only motive of capitalism is profit. And we can even see now where they don't care about the white middle class. The white middle class is, shrink is shrinking. But do we try to save our place on the pedestal of everybody else's oppression and everybody else in the world has an interest in tearing this this structure down? Or do we say, no, we abandon our relationship. We acknowledge the terror that we have carried out to African people, the lynchings, the torture, the burnings, the assaults on Africans that we have been part of, that we have benefited from, that we abandon that position because that upholds U.S. imperialism. And we say we stand in solidarity with the right of African people to their land, to their culture, to, and to what is rightfully theirs. That is reparations. That is reparations as a revolutionary demand. So I want to call on you to join us in the African People's Solidarity Committee's national conference, which is going to be here in St. Petersburg, Florida, on January 11th. And it follows two days of the African People's Socialist Party's national plenary, where it lays out its understandings, it brings together its members and supporters, it lays out its strategy for the upcoming period, of which solidarity from white people is part of. And so I invite you to come January 9th and 10th to the national plenary of the African People's Socialist Party here in St. Petersburg, Florida, and spend another day, Monday, January 11th, take these three days to unlearn everything you ever thought you knew and begin to see the world as the majority of humanity experiences it and begin to see a future for all of the world and ourselves included. So go to APSP Plenary, that's APSP, P-L-E-N-A-R-Y dot O-R-G to find out more about this. You can also go to 
bookhulumuse.com and you can go to bookhulusolidarity.org to become involved and to find out more about how you can participate in this incredible dynamic movement that gives everyone who unites with it a future of peace and justice on this planet. Uhuru.